It's hard to believe, but attempts to detect life on Mars have been going on for more than 40 years. Basically, all of the searches are related to water. Where there's liquid water, life can be born. And this would mean that we're not alone in the universe. But what if you brought water to Mars artificially, and not just a few drops, but a billion liters at once? At first, the idea seemed strange to me, but then again, it's better to see for oneself. And by the way, I made a small mistake in this video. Don't forget to write in the comments if you notice it. Despite the fact that 1 billion liters sounds so substantial, it's only 140 trillionths of a percent of all the water in the Pacific Ocean. And there are many other bodies of water on Earth, so the world's ocean wouldn't suffer much. But what about Mars? The red planet is devoid of liquid water on the surface for a reason. At present, the atmosphere of Mars is so thin and retains heat so poorly that water in a liquid state can only exist on its surface for short periods of time. Michael Chaffin, a scientist working on the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Project, says that if you took a glass of liquid water and poured it on Mars, some of it would freeze and the rest would turn into steam. To prevent this from happening, you'd have to change the very atmosphere of the planet. In theory, it would help to pump some of the greenhouse gases from Earth's atmosphere to Mars. Then, it would be possible to warm up the planet to such a state that a large amount of liquid water could exist on it as it was in the distant past, about three and a half billion years ago. It's quite simple. The thicker the atmosphere, the more stable the atmospheric pressure and temperature on the planet, which means that the water would also be stabilized. However, this technology doesn't exist, which means that the mass of the water wouldn't remain in a liquid state. It would freeze and boil at the same time. It seems that water on Mars wants to be in any form other than liquid. But we're going to drop a billion liters of water on Mars, not a glass. And we're going to do it very quickly. Let's say we managed to do it, and all the water ended up in one of the large Martian craters, quickly filling it. In this way, we could create a lake on the red planet. However, not every indent on the surface of the planet would be suitable for this. It's on Mars that scientists have found the largest crater in the solar system. Its diameter exceeds 5,000 miles. Let's assume that we didn't pour Earth's water all in one place, but we decided to moisten the entire planet equally. This would be difficult from a technical point of view since the surface area of Mars is about 56 million square miles. But nothing is preventing us from presenting this situation in theory. And for the most part, thanks to the calculations of scientists, we can simulate anything. For example, the consequences of a supervolcano eruption or the impact of a huge asteroid. But back to the water on Mars. So, if we were able to evenly distribute all the water over the planet, the surface of Mars would be covered with a layer about 7 nanometers thick. This is so small that it's unlikely it would change the appearance of the planet. Anyway, neither this small amount of water nor the lake we created on Mars would last long. Some of the water would evaporate, and the lake would freeze and be covered with dust. After a while, nothing would be left to remind you of the experiment. So, how is it possible to deliver such a volume of water to another planet? None of the existing technology would allow you to do this, even if you used all the shuttles that humanity has at its disposal. So, let's turn to science fiction. Building a huge space pipeline is too unrealistic of a strategy, so let's use a portal. First, let's move to the deepest point of the world ocean, the Challenger Deep. It's eight and a half miles deep, the perfect place to borrow some water. We'll open a portal here about 65 feet in diameter. 
If we placed the second part of the portal close to Earth, the water would simply fall back on the planet. Falling, the liquid would heat up and turn into steam, then condense and return to the ocean as precipitation. In addition, the energy released into the atmosphere during the process would seriously affect our climate. Add to this huge clouds of steam at a high altitude, all of this would change life on Earth forever. We'd have to put the ocean transportation portal further away, right on Mars. As we already found out, due to the properties of the atmosphere, even such a volume of water cannot irrevocably change the planet. However, it's not necessary to deliver water to Mars with or without a portal. It's already there. Currently, scientists believe that most of the volume of Martian water is concentrated in the so-called cryosphere. This is a near-surface layer of permafrost that is tens or even hundreds of feet thick. If the ice wasn't sitting under the surface of the planet, it would pass into a different aggregate state and then simply evaporate. Only in the circumpolar regions is the temperature low enough for the stable existence of ice throughout the year. That's why there are polar caps on Mars. The total volume of ice on the surface and in the near-surface layer of the red planet is estimated at more than 1 million cubic miles. But this isn't all the water that is theoretically found on Mars. In deeper layers, large reserves of salt water may be concentrated. This water is so abundant that if you melted it, it could cover the entire planet with a layer more than a hundred feet thick. Liquid is also present in the Martian soil. This was discovered by the Curiosity rover. Studies have shown that the liquid content in a soil sample of the red planet is 2%. So, all the first colonists on Mars will need to do to get water is collect the soil and heat it to the desired temperature. As a result, to cover Mars with water, you just need to get it from the planet itself in the right amount. If there's a lot of water, it won't have time to evaporate or turn into ice, and this will be the first step to the birth of life. Of course, provided that a person could change the Martian climate and other characteristics of the planet. Yes, we could make the red planet habitable, change its atmosphere, and eventually turn it into a thriving colony of Earth. This would probably take a long time, but it seems to me that the expectation is fully justified. The more interested I am in science, the more I understand that nothing is impossible for humanity. After all, people managed to extinguish a fire with a nuclear explosion and learned how to design amazing aircraft. If you, like me, are interested in incredible discoveries and bold theories, subscribe to the channel. Very soon, I'm going to tell you about what happened before the Big Bang and what Stephen Hawking has to do with it. Until next time.